An Alabama woman hopes her fight for clean drinking water will inspire people who are facing a similar battle here in North Carolina. In tonight's local original, the chance encounter of a triangle filmmaker and an activist. Hey, baby. Oh. Hey, hey. Known as the Angel of Alabama, Brenda Hampton has been fighting and winning. Her quest started after her grandparents and then her mother died of kidney failure, and Brenda nearly did as well. I noticed that other people in the community were coming down with renal failure, a lot of rare cancers and stuff. So I was trying to find out what we had in common with the other communities. And doing my research, the only thing I could find out that we had in common was the water. In the meantime, Elijah Yetter Bowman was on his own quest in Cumberland County to document water contamination in and along the Cape Fear River. In making nonstick Cookware, Camores had been using a chemical compound known as Gen X, which made its way into well water and the air. Elijah and Brenda crossed paths, and Elijah knew he had yet another story to tell. And to think that one person could have so much power, you might say, oh, that's impossible. No, it's not. And, and Brenda's living proof. Every single person has a lot of influence. Um, it just it requires believing in yourself. Brenda helped lead a successful charge to get the manufacturer 3M to take action to filter the water supply and prevent PFAS or forever chemicals from entering the environment. In the beginning, Brenda says not all of her community was behind her. I have cameras in my home I've been shot at. I had a doll cut up, put it in my truck, warning me about it, to stay away from it, to leave it alone. Uh, the only thing that relieved pressure on me was when the CEO of uh, 3M came out and admitted that they had been putting these toxins in the water since the 1950s. Brenda shows the accessibility that we all have in not just impacting our, our neighbors, not just our local communities, but I mean, Brenda's done stuff that's caused global changes. Including a petition with 75,000 signatures to get McDonald's to agree to no longer use waxy sandwich wrappers that contain PFOS. McDonald's said yes, and by 2025, the wrappers will be completely phased out. Both Elijah and Brenda hope that if the government won't act fast enough, corporations will. There's not a human being on the planet that doesn't have PFAS in their bodies, and that will probably be true for the next several hundred years. The question is, how do we work together in solidarity to address this systemically? Brenda's message for the people of North Carolina? We should all feel safe to be able to walk to our kitchen sink and turn on our faucet and drink clean water. Clean and safe water is a right. It's not a privilege. Wow, Brenda doing really amazing work there. It gives me chills yeah. that what she is able to do. And mm -hmm. she did a lot of this as she was also sick. Wow. Uh, Elijah premiered that mini documentary with Brenda's story at Chapel, uh, UNC Chapel Hill mm -hmm. yesterday. He's doing the same tonight at Duke. And wow. the documentary he's working on with Gen X is in post-production at this point. Amazing story, Russ. Thank you. Yeah, I'm glad somebody's out there to tell these yeah. stories, too.